5280 Sports Network, good morning. Nate Lundy, Sean Drotar. It is your morning minute on a Monday after the uh, loss to the Patriots. Sean, lots of different angles to talk about. We can do it all week long when it comes to this game. The criticism coming from fans, things we've heard in the stands, altercations in the locker room. There are so many different places we could go, but the easiest place to start is you cannot hold Tom Brady to 16 points and lose. Tom Brady didn't have a single passing yard until the second quarter. Zero. Never happened before. Started 0-6 in his, in his attempts. Never happened before. The Broncos' defense was on the field for 75 snaps. This is not on the defense. I don't care if you even look at a play or two. The defense was spectacular. It was exactly what we talked about last week in these morning minutes here. It was on the offense to get it done. They couldn't do it. But right. to me, when you look at all these criticisms, Nate, this is the culmination of everything we've talked about all year. To me, this is where this road was always going to lead to one game that was basically going to end their season where people look at it and say, oh, I can't believe this happened. Well, all the signs were there. It was always going this way. None of this is necessary new or even unexpected, but it does still seem like fans are surprised by the outcome. Let's get to uh, a handful of the criticisms that have happened over the course of the last 24 hours, things I heard in the stands uh, sitting at the game uh, yesterday, uh, things you can see on Twitter, you can see from bloggers, you can see from just about anybody. And I want to start with this one. There are a number of people talking about how you have to get rid of the Kubiak offense, as I use the air quotes. Um, you have to get rid of that offense, that that offense doesn't work, that that's the problem. Um, not only do I disagree with that, I would return that comment with a question, and I welcome it, and you can comment in the comments section of this video, or you can tweet at us, or whatever you want. What offense do you think they need to run? Do you have an answer there? Because I'm trying to figure out what offense you think the talent on this team can actually pull off and have 12 wins. Because if you can, I highly recommend you put together a resume and send it to John Elway because you should probably get hired immediately because you have all the answers. My point being, the talent, especially in the trenches, is not up to the level that it needs to be at an NFL caliber team to be one of the six best in your conference to make the playoffs and have a shot at Super Bowl 51 in Houston. The talent isn't there right now. This isn't Trevor Simeon's fault any more than it would be Paxton Lynch's fault right now if he were out there. The Talent isn't living up to where it needs to be in the front five. You have a draft pick in Ty Sambrilo who was inactive yesterday despite the fact that the worst part of your team is the offensive line. And it was the most important game of the year. Exactly. That's where you've got your problems. So everybody that wants to fire Kubiak, fire Dennison, get rid of that offense, my question is, what offense do you want them to run given what they have on this team? And if you can answer that, then you're a hell of a lot smarter than everyone else out here associated with this team. So take a deep breath, understand this team is what it is, continue to polish off the shine on Super Bowl 50's trophy, and just enjoy the fact that you're not Jacksonville. Yeah, and get a little okay? bit of perspective with this, too. I mean, we were having this exact same conversation after the 2014 season that John Fox's offense will never work here. We have to get rid of the John Fox offense. They did. They had brought in Kubiak. Oh, and they won the Super Bowl. So at a certain point, a little bit of perspective. I understand there's frustration when the team underperforms. And this team did, given the overall talent, underperform. But you hit it on the head, Nate. Those five guys in the front. That's the Achilles heel. Sometimes that's all it takes to take your season down, and that's exactly what happened again this season. So you got a lot of reaction to get through as we come out of uh, Sunday's game. Um, there are a lot of things that we will be looking at, and yes, they are still mathematically in it for the playoffs. We know how hard that putt is going to be. It's uphill. It's got four breaks. It's also windy, and there's some ice on the putting green. And gophers that are running across about to steal the putt. Ooh, kind of like Frogger. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of that ahead of us. It does not mean any of us have given up, and on Christmas night, we will watch them at Arrowhead, just as we would have no matter whether they had won yesterday or not. But keep in mind that sometimes in 140 characters in social media, you can oversimplify what you think the problems are when they are not the problems. Sean and I are here to talk to you about it all week long. The podcast, the videos, the radio show on Mile High Sports will be there with you. For Sean Drotar, my name is Nate Lundy. Everybody take a deep breath. This is 5280 Sports Network.